Hello and welcome everybody to this automotive technology video. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to perform the distortion with disturber test for 1000 base T1 automotive Ethernet. What I have in front of me is the RTO6 series, 6 GHz oscilloscope. I have the RTZF8. This is the board that allows me to do the, the compliance test for more of the most of the test cases for 100 and 1000 base T1. I have the RTZF7A where I have attached the MateNet connector and I also have the Marvell DUT that supports both 100 and 1000 base T1. So the distortion with disturber tests requires that we put our DUT into test mode 4. Test mode 4 is a PRBS signal, so a pseudo-random binary signal. And let's have a look on how easy it is to do this uh, setup and run the test. So the first thing I need to do is uh, I'm going to open up the scope suite and this is the automation software. So I'm going to click on my compliance cockpit here and I'm going to choose the 1000 base T1. The scope suite loads up. First of all, I have some uh, settings. Right now, I will be using a single-ended, so I'm going to channel 1 and channel 3. And then uh, I am going to be using the disturbing signal. Now, uh, this is a very cool feature of the RTO6 because the disturber signal, you don't need an external signal generator, but it's integrated on the instrument itself. And uh, basically here I also have the option to choose the test limits, whether this is coming from the IEEE standards or from uh, ECU makers. And of course, uh, I am using the test fixture, which is the RT-ZF8. So when I click on the transmitter distortion, it tells me that this needs the test mode 4. I can confirm here I have the single ended to channel 1 and channel 3. And uh, let's go through this uh, test example. So I pressed test single. Now the uh, oscilloscope is asking me if I actually want to do the calibration of the signal generator or the noise generator, but I already have done this before. So in this case, I will click no. And then this is what is very cool about the scope suite. I have a picture guided way to perform my test. So number one, it tells me I need to use the uh, area of my uh, compliance test board, which is number four. And this is where I have my connections here. The second step, it tells me to connect the plus and minus of my signal uh, to the DUT. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my DUT into this test fixture. So now I am connected to the plus and the minus. The third step is I need to take the output without the disturber going to my oscilloscope. So this is where I have connected those blue cables going to the oscilloscope. And finally, step number four, this is the signal that is coming from the noise source. And this is on the B6 that is at the back of the instrument coming to these light blue cables into my test fixtures. So I am ready connected, so let's go through and make the test. I click next. Now the oscilloscope is asking me to configure the DUT to operate in test mode 4. In order to do that, I need to uh, exit the program. So I am using again the same oscilloscope and I have installed the Marvell graphical user interface. So I am calling now uh, this uh, software. First of all, I have to make sure the connection is right. So I'm using here a USB to SMI adapter and I am connected to port one. So I'm going to refresh the values. And then I need to go to the registry description, which is the tab, the second tab at the top. And I need to look for the scripts that I have to do with the PMA, the uh, physical media attachment. So 
If you look now at the bottom of the registry, uh, 8000, this is accessing the 1000 base D1, test mode control, and test mode 4, actually it's uh, 0, 0, 001. So I refresh the value, and now I should be able to have test mode 4. Once uh, this is done, I'm going now back to my uh, oscilloscope. So here we see the signal, and then I am going back to the scope suite. We are ready to test with test mode 4. I click next. Now the software automatically will collect all the waveforms. It's calculating the noise level and will make the test. It takes actually two or three seconds, no longer than that. This test, as you can see, is already uh, done. It's passed. So let's have a look together on the test report. All I have to do, first of all, is click show report on my scope suite. And right now, what happens in the background, there is a PDF uh, file that is generated. So let's have a look. Here, of course, we run only one test cases, but I want to explain you. You can put some uh, parameters like the device name, who is the user, where this was tested, what was the temperature. And also it shows you the firmware versions of the oscilloscope and the scope suite that was used. So here we did only one test case, the transmitter distortion using test mode 4. Some uh, more parameters about what kind of test fixtures was used. But let's have a look on the actual data. So you have here some information about the, the measurements and also you, got, you have a graphical uh, representation on the results that look very, very good. So I hope uh, you could see how easy it is to perform the distortion with this server, which could possibly be the most tricky test to do because you would need an external uh, signal generator. However, with the RTO6 uh, oscilloscope, we have this integrated and the whole process is automated and very easy to perform. So I'm going to see you next time. Until then, stay safe and healthy. Goodbye. Thank you.